Hey everyone, my name is Jean. I'm Lucas. In this video, we're gonna talk about the tips and tricks that you can use to successfully ferment. So depending on the ferment and what you wanna do, uh, some people say the way to go is a sterile environment. But if you're a beginner and you want to ferment your veggies, your water kefir or your kombucha, you just need a clean and sanitary workspace. This implies that you would clean thoroughly all your objects that you're gonna use for your ferments, like the knife, the cutting board, the jar, and as well your vegetables, because fresh produce normally comes with dirt and you want to thoroughly clean your vegetables before you ferment them. Just put all the utensils that you're gonna use for your ferments in boiling water, and in that sense, you can really uh, reassure to yourself that everything that you're using was properly sanitized and is ready to use for your beginner ferments. So you want some fancy sparkling kombucha such as these Instagram influencers? Well, this happens through a process called the second fermentation. With second fermentation, you're going to carbonate your fermented drink and all the carbon is gonna stay stuck in the bottle. It's gonna be trapped like this. It's gonna get all fizzy. And then when you open it up, you can see online a lot of videos where people open their fermented drinks and it's amazing. It's just everything goes out of the bottle and, then, and it just spills all over the kitchen and you'll just end up having the whole ceiling red. But then it can also go so far that you have really used the wrong tools that the bottle can even break. Fermented drinks in bottles is not something new. Now beer bottles, these bottles are made uh, to withstand the pressure and also champagne bottles because they have much more pressure than beer. Uh, here you can see that it's always a heavy glass. Now these are um, tools that you can use. You can put your fermented drink into a beer bottle, but this is a process which is not really reusable and it requires you to have certain tools to close these bottles. So that's why the, um, the easiest and most common, common tool that people use at home are swing top bottles. Swing top bottles such as this one for example, you can close it like this and open up very easily and they're totally reusable. So if there is really too much pressure building up then the, the closure will open up a little bit and will release the gas. And we have a video where our colleague Juan is doing the quality control where he simulates uh, the testing of uh, pressure in the bottle and you can see the video over here. So now I can show you uh, how to fill these bottles because we have your perfect example, which is our water kefir. I've added here some, some dried berries and when they will start to float on the top, you know that um, the drink has already started to carbonate. We have our funnel and take out all the kefir grains and the uh, dried berries. This can get a little bit messy. Always leave a little bit of, of headspace and now we can close it. This is actually ready to start another batch. So now we're gonna talk about fermenting winter vegetables. And besides the health benefits that vegetables bring to you, like minerals, uh, vitamins, amino acids, all the good stuff that vegetables have, it's a shame if you're not gonna use the vegetables that are in season right now. So now we are in winter, and what is in season right now is Brussels sprouts, cabbage and kale, broccoli and carrots are in season all year, and these, with the right spices, you're gonna make really, really delicious ferments with the really nice flavor notes. So a lot of people ask what's the right temperature to ferment. And this is always between 21 and 25 degrees Celsius. But imagine that your house doesn't have these temperatures. And you may think that this is gonna hinder your ferment, but no. You can always ferment in lower temperatures, it's just gonna take longer. And maybe this even has some benefits to your ferment. When you ferment something and the temperature is lower, it's gonna take longer. Taking longer, the herbs that you put inside and the spices are gonna infuse more in the vegetables and they're gonna bring up more the flavor notes of those spices, making a more delicious ferment. And secondly, if you ferment with lower temperatures, you're just gonna preserve and have a higher lifespan of the ferment in itself. Let's think now that you don't wanna wait this time. You don't wanna wait up to two, maybe three months to have a finished product. If you wanna get really fancy, you can use a heating pad. So you would put your jars on top of the heating pad 
the heating pad would be at 21 to 25 degrees and like that you could control always the temperature of your ferments. But you don't have to be this fancy and if you want to be more roots you can just leave your ferments in your living area. Imagine that you have a living area that has this temperature where you have your normal day to day. It's your kitchen or it's your living space, your room, whatever it is, maybe it's an even cool conversation starter. You know, people ask you, ah, what, what is this and that? You can use it as decoration always. Choosing the right vessel can be very important for your ferments. But as you know, fermenting goes way back in time. So people have used all kinds of vessels already to ferment. And there are probably some kind of vessels where you go like, mm, I really wouldn't want to try what's in there. But some of the most common vessels people have used in the past are, for example, wooden containers. They are used for very specific fermentations. A classic fermentation or more like an aging process would be for example with, uh, with wine or whiskey. You would put this into a barrel and to age it in there. But here if you focus on lacto-fermented foods or fer fermented vegetables for example, normally you wouldn't use a wooden container. Plastic containers in general I would avoid, especially if you have something that you want to keep um, keep fermenting for some days because the plastic will ultimately migrate into your ferments and uh, this is something I just want to avoid. And then we have also, which is actually the most common one, are glass jars. Why are glass jars the most commonly used vessel for fermenting today? And the main reason is that glass is considered a very hygienic material. So imagine you put the most smelly kimchi you've ever seen in your life, you put it in a glass jar, you let it sit there, the kimchi won't affect the glass and the glass won't affect the kimchi. And um, so that's why it's very nice to use glass because you can super easily clean them afterwards. Some common glass jars which you find a lot in the supermarket are, uh, are these ones. There's now a very small version, but these have the simple, simple caps. Some people ferment in them. It depends always on the kind of ferment that you want to do. The problem with these jars is that um, the glass is, is always fine, but the closure is not really reusable. The closure was made for a single use. In general, if you want to have also a ferment where you want to, um, uh, where you want to have pressure, such as a kimchi or a sauerkraut, for example, these jars are not very ideal. So here we're looking now at some of our jars, which are a great, um, a great alternative. We have developed these jars specifically with the intention to be a great tool for fermenting. And why is that? So one of the jars that we have here is the Mariposa jar. It is very easy to open. This can open like this with the wire take the glass cap off and then easily take out the what's inside the jar or, or keep on filling the jar. This jar has also great functionality for pressure. If you do a sauerkraut for example, you will have a lot of pressure build up inside of the jar and you will have to burp it once a day. So here it's very easy because you actually don't have to open up the jars, which of course can bring bad bacteria into your jar and start growing mold in the ferment, which is what you want to avoid. So in order to avoid this, you keep this jar closed and just once a day you come, pull on the nose and so we have successfully burped the jar. Then we have another jar, which is the sunny cap. We call it the sunny cap because you can look inside very easily from the top. And here as well, the nice thing is that this is a glass cap. So it means that the whole inside of the jar only touches glass and the ceiling and the ceiling ring. It doesn't touch any kind of uh, metal such as the stainless steel. Stainless steel is only outside. So for me, in terms of fermenting, I'm very comfortable because it's only glass with the ceiling gasket that the ferment stays in a hygienic environment. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I think the biggest takeaway here is that you have to play around with it. You have to explore and uh, find out new little things. Do like experiments at home, such as we are doing here in the kitchen as well. And like this, you're gonna learn and, uh, and yeah, and just have fun with it. Yeah, the first time maybe it's not gonna go so well, but believe me, the second time it's gonna go way better. Exactly. And feel free to follow us. Uh, we will always post more content. So if you feel a little bit lost, uh, follow us because we have more, more interesting things to share. We also share about other topics such as canning, in general food preservation and storage. So if you're interested in this, give us a like and subscribe. Have a nice day, bye. Bye bye.